All right, so what I want to do in this video is I want to go ahead and take you through uh, those worksheets on Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. Uh, where we're just basically focusing on the direction of the induced current and the induced voltage for different cases. Okay, so it's an application of Lenz's Law is what this is all about. So first of all, uh, the top of the page says Lenz's Law, and then it has written out Lenz's Law, which says, the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current that creates a magnetic flux to oppose the change in magnetic flux through the area enclosed by the current loop. And you say, yeah, I don't know what the heck that means. Um, but we talked about this in the last video that what it means is when you induce a current, when you make a current flow by having that changing flux, that induced current will make its own magnetic field that tries to fight against the change in magnetic flux. All right. It always tries to keep the magnetic flux through that closed path of that conductor the same. So current flows to try to fight the change that's making it flow. So you always have to end up doing work. You're not going to get free energy out. Um, so this first one says, hey, look, here is this, uh, this loop of wire. And I have a north pole of the magnet that I'm moving to the velocity up, that I'm pushing that north pole magnet closer. That looks like this. Uh, pretend this is made out of metal, OK? Um, and then here I have a north pole, and I'm shoving the north pole that way. So here we go. So the question we're going to ask is, as I push this closer, what is that doing to the amount of magnetic flux, the number of magnetic field lines, that's the magnetic flux, going through that loop? I say, well, first of all, a north pole, field lines go up out of a north pole of a magnet. So as I push this closer, field lines that would have missed are now going to go through the loop. So the change in flux is that we have an increase in flux up through the loop. Therefore, the current has to flow to try to make more flux go down through the loop, right? That's what has to happen. So you say, okay, now which way does it have to flow? Um, the right-hand rule that I first taught you for a wire went like this. If I have a wire, and current flows along the wire. I take my right hand, grab the wire with my thumb in the direction of the current. The way my finger line, fingers loop around the wire, that's the way the field lines loop around the wire. So I might imagine grabbing the front edge of this loop here, right? So grab that front edge, grabbing that front edge. I see now which way should I grab it? We just said that we're increasing the flux up. Current has to flow then to increase the flux down. So the current that flows will try to make flux go down to fight the change. So that means I want the flux to go down through the middle of the loop. I got to grab the front of the wire like this. So the current, so my field going down, down, down inside that loop to fight against this change. So the current is going to be going to the left in front. So from this kind of looking down on the loop view, it would be clockwise. My induced current is going to flow around this way. All right. Now, we just did that with the right-hand rule that says if I got a straight wire, I grab the wire with the thumb in the direction of the current, and the way my fingers, my right hand, would naturally loop around the wire, that's where the field lines loop around that wire. It turns out there's an optional third right-hand rule that's just for loops or coils of wire. So it's not necessary. But boy, it's helpful to have when you're doing problems with loops and coils. So let me show it to you. The rule we just did says, once again, grab the wire, thumb in the direction of the current, finger show the field lines loop around the wire. For a loop or coil of current, though, you can use this, you have the option of doing this other rule. And that is, if I've got a loop or a coil, what we really care about usually is the field in the middle of the loop. Because that's where it's really strong, where it's reinforced by the current going all the way around. So this rule goes like this. Instead of grabbing the wire, thumb is the, is the current, fingers are the field. For a loop, we can reverse that. Here's my loop. If the current is going around like this, clockwise, fingers are the current, thumb is the field through the center of the loop. And so I can just go like this. Oh, the field's down through the center of that. And that's a quicker, it's a right-hand rule just for loops and curls of wire, where my fingers go with the current and thumb is the field through the center of the loop. All right? And that makes this a lot faster to think through. Try this next one. This next one 
here I have a loop of wire. This time I'm pulling the magnet down, but I'm pulling the south pole away. So I have the magnet like this, and I'm pulling that south pole away. What's the change in the flux through that loop? You say, well, south pole, field lines go into the south pole of the magnet. As I move this away, the field's getting weaker and weaker. So the change is I'm getting less field lines down through the loop. The change in flux here that's happening is I have a decrease in magnetic flux downwards through the loop. Therefore, current has to flow to try to make more flux go down through the center of that loop to fight against the change. And so you say, okay, which way does the current have to go? I have to make more flux go down. My new right hand rule, thumb go down in the middle, fingers are the current, it would have to loop around like this. So my induced current actually is gonna go the same way as in the last problem. That's the way the I induced will flow. Because that will make its own field that goes down to fight to kind of fight against that change that was making it flow. All right. I'm going to show you uh, two more examples here. Take a look at this one. Okay. What we have here is I have a loop of wire. Now in this case, it's kind of rectangular. Uh, instead of circular, doesn't matter. But here I have a loop of wire. This time I'm moving that wire, okay? I'm not moving the magnet, I'm moving the wire this time. And I'm moving it sideways like this, okay? Now the X's are of course a magnetic field going away from us into the page. What happens to the number of field lines as this loop is entering the magnetic field? Well, when it's outside the magnetic field, there's no flux through the loop at all. As it enters, there's more and more, there'll be more and more field lines going in through the loop. So what's the change in flux that's happening here? The change is there's an increase in flux into the loop. Okay, in through the loop, into the page. Therefore, current has to flow to fight the change. The induced current in this loop will try to make more flux go out. Your new right hand rule, thumb is the flux through the middle, fingers are the current going around the loop. It's got to go around this way. So my induced current will be counterclockwise. It'll make current flow around that way. What about here? This is a uniform magnetic field. The number of field lines going through the loop then isn't changing as it goes across. So in this part, as it moves across in the field, that I induced is zero because there is no change in flux through the loop. What about as this loop is exiting the field? Well, what's the change in flux? There's less and less field lines going in through it. There's a decrease in flux into the page through the loop. Therefore, current has to flow to try to make more flux in through the page. That will be to make flux go in, my fingers will curl around this way. Current has to flow clockwise in this case. The induced current is going to be clockwise. All right, this one, okay. Okay, this is a metal bar, okay? It, it's kind of intended to be like probably an iron core of an electromagnet, but uh, of a solenoid. And then I have wire, my conductor that I care about, the one I'm gonna actually make the current charge flow through, is wrapped around it. In this case, it's wrapped around this way, so it's going uh, up, well, you get it, right? So uh, it looks kind of like this. 
Okay, this is that that case. This is this is the case in the picture. Okay, now what I'm going to do? This is making little coils, little loops, isn't it? Right, the helical winding. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the north pole of a magnet away. Okay, so this is another pic. This is a picture. These two together is a separate picture from this. I should have put more space in there. I will make sure I make that fix. Okay, anyway, so the point is I'm moving the north pole away. What is that doing to me? What's it doing to flux that goes through these loops? You say, well, field lines go out of north pole, right? The field for this bar magnet would be shooting this way, right? And then kind of spreading out. And if I move it away, moving this magnet away, I'm decreasing the field gets weaker. I'm making less field lines go left through these loops, through the, through the solenoid. So there's a decrease in flux, magnetic flux, to the left. Therefore, this will induce current. I'll make a voltage in that loopy wire so that there makes to cause current to flow so that it makes more flux go left. Which way will that current have to flow in the wire? This is where our thir that third right hand rule is really handy. <laughs> yeah, um, you say, I wanna make more flux go left. Current has to wrap around this way, up in front, down in back, right? And you say, look at this wire then, that means my current has to come in like this and go up in front, down behind the bar, up in front, down and behind, right? Okay, that's the way the current, induced current has to flow. So that'll make flux go to the left. So my I induced will flow this way. And it's gonna go up in front and then down, down and back, right? You know what I mean? And my current's gonna go out this way. Because when it does that, it'll make field lines going to the left inside that coil. If you want to use the, the old right hand rule that we had, the one that we developed for a straight wire, grab the wire thumb with the current fingers of the field, and you say, okay, I might just grab this wire in front here and say, okay, is the current going up or going down in it? Well, I want the field behind the wire here in the bar in the center to go left, so current would have to go up in front. So behind this wire here through the metal bar, it's going left. Okay, and that would, that would match with what we just did here. So it's gonna go up, 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 down, down in the back. Big field lines going left. All right, we have one more case here. This case at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna erase this so I can slide this up without drawing on top of myself here. Okay. Let me explain what's happening in this picture. Okay, in this picture here. What I have here is I have a rectangular uh, like loop of conductor, right? But that's staying still. All these dots, that's an external magnetic field that's coming out of the page. What this is, this is a metal bar that I am sliding. So it's like these are like metal rails that it's sliding on. I'm sliding that bar across in velocity to the right for this metal bar. So this metal bar is making electrical contact here. So you see, actually, I've got two loops of conductor here, don't I? As this slides to the right, what's going to happen to the amount of flux in the left loop? You say, oh, field lines are coming out. As this slides right, that loop has more and more field lines going out because the loop's getting bigger, the area is getting bigger, I'm getting more field lines out, right? Yeah. So this left side has an increase in flux out of the page. What's happening to the right loop? Well, as that area gets smaller and smaller, there's less and less field lines going through this loop. So this, had, this side has a decrease in flux, magnetic flux out of page. Okay, this left side, increase in field lines going out, which way does the current have to go? It has to flow so that it will make, it will fight the change and make 
plug, instead of having an increase in field lines coming out, it's got to try to make field lines go in to fight the change. Which way does the current need to flow around to make more field lines go in through the middle? Using our new third right hand rule, fingers are the current, thumb is the field. Would this do it? No, that would make more field lines out through the middle. It's got, current's got to flow this way around. So my current, my induced current, you say it's got to go What about this side? I'm decreasing flux coming out of the pitch. This bar goes and that area shrinks. Less flux going out, current has to flow to make more flux go out, so it's got to curl around this way. So you make more fingers with the current, thumbs the field in the middle of the loop. That's the right-hand rule for loops, the third right-hand rule. And so you say, it would be going this way then. And if you look at that, you say, oh, that makes sense. Look, the current's going to flow, and when it gets to here, it's going to shoot down this bar and go out like this. That's the way the induced current will go as that bar slides across to the right. Okay, So my induced current in the bar will be going that way. As that bar slides across on the rails, current will get forced down it. Okay? All right. I'm going to come back and say a few words about this. Uh, I think I'm going to do it in another video. Okay, there's some a calculation I want you to see with this that's really cool. Okay, and some cool implications. So I'm saying that for another one. Let's go to the next page of Lenz's Law and Electromagnetic Induction um, conceptual things. Here we go. Next page says magnetic flux and induced EMF. Induced voltage, right? EMF again is made voltage. It says, hey, here in these diagrams, I've got a loop of wire that's connected to a resistor, so it makes a nice circuit, right? Okay, and there's some resistance. When I push current around, it's going to burn off energy in that resistor. If that resistor was a light bulb, a light bulb might light up. It's kind of cool. Um, I have a setup like that here. We have a little light bulb that's connected to no battery, but it's connected to this coil of copper wire. Okay, if I put a very strong changing magnetic field through this loop, Right, changing the flux, it will make enough current flow around to light up that light bulb. I do it as a demo, it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, point is, in this case, what they want to know is, what's the direction of the induced current in the loop? As I push, in this case, I'm pushing the north pole of the magnet to the left, is the current going to go around this way or around this way? Okay, in that loop. And then they want to know which side of the resistor would be the high V side, side A or side B, right? which we're going to figure out from which way the current flows, which way the voltage is. Uh, so here we go. So uh, which side of the loop would be a north pole or a south pole? So we can talk through that with this one. Okay, real quick. I'm just going to do these super fast, okay? Because this is like we talked about already. I'm going to go fast. It's on a video. You can pause and stop and think. So here we go. Think about this one. North pole going to the left. Ready? Induce current. Which side of this is the higher voltage? And which side is the north pole? Let's, let's, do, let's do the voltage one last. So here we go. Ready? Here we go. Hey, what's the change? As I do this, I'm making more field lines going left through that loop. So current has to flow to make more field lines go to the right through the loop. That will happen if the current flows around this way. That's the induced current. That's going to make field lines go out to the right. So to the right is the north pole, and this is the south pole for the induced uh, magnetic field. Right? Now, if the current is flowing around this away, then my charges, right, uh, as they go, and again, I know we're talking about conventional current, and it's really electrons going there, but let's not worry about that. You say, hey, you know, voltage is always kind of defined from a positive charge point of view. You say, hey, the positive charge is forced to flow through this resistor this way, right? My current is flowing through the resistor this way. And you say current goes from high V to low V. So A is the high V side, and B is the low V side. Okay, for the voltage. Okay, moving on. So that's how we figured it out. So we first figured out which way. Uh, yeah, let's do the next one. Two. This time we're going to move a north pole away. You say, well, <laughs> north pole towards north pole away. It's got to be the opposite, right? Yes, but let's, let's logic it through. North pole, field lines go out of north. They're going to the left through this loop. But I'm moving it away, so I'm getting less and less field lines left. So current has to flow to make more field lines go left, which means the current has to go around this way to make more field lines go left. 
So the induced current is going to flow this way, which means in the resistor, the induced current is going that way. If the currents making more fuel lines go left, that means the left side is the north pole, the right side is the south pole. Again, hey, it always fights against what you're doing, so you have to do work, right? So if I try to pull a north pole to the right, it makes a south pole on the right side to fight against me, right? Make me have to do work to push those charges through. Um, the current flows this way, it flows from high V to low V, and so B now is the high V side. Okay? Uh, or we can write it like this, V at B is greater than the V at A. Anyway, moving onward. Uh, three. Magnet is in place, it's sitting still, but I'm moving the loop upward, okay? So I have my magnet sitting still, and I'm just going to move this loop upward like this, right? This loop is kind of at an angle like this, so you can see the perspective, but we're moving this past it. Now right now, how many field lines are going through this loop? Hardly any, right? As I go, when I get like this, I'm going to get the maximum field lines through that loop, and I'm going to get minimum, right? So let's talk about it while it's entering here. You say, I'm as it goes up towards it, I'm increasing the number of field lines. Okay? That's not what's happening in this picture. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not what's happening in this problem. Sorry. I misinterpreted the diagram. Let me show you what's happening in this problem. It's a different thing altogether. I'm sorry. We're not moving the loop. Here's what we're doing. I've got the magnet over here, right? What I'm doing is I'm grabbing this, I'm holding this steady, and I'm yanking on this. What's that going to do to this loop? Well, if I yank hard enough, it's going to collapse. I'm going to decrease the area of the loop. If I pull hard enough, these two sides go right next to each other, and I can make the area go away. So what's happening is I'm decreasing the area of the loop. That's what's happening in this problem. I don't want to screw up my cool rectangular loop. Okay, so yeah, so what happens is I yank this, I'm distorting the loop, and I'm decreasing the area. If I decrease the area, what's that going to do to the amount of flux going through the loop? Less area, less field lines going able to go through, right? And so there's a decrease in flux left, right? Magnetic field, north pole, field lines go out. I'm having less field line, less flux left, so current has to flow to make more flux go left. It's going to go this way. That's going to make more flux go left, which means this is going to be the north pole, and this will be the south. You say, well, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you say, uh, if the current's going around this way, and the current's going this way, and so the B is the high V. Uh, the potential at B is greater than the potential at A. Yeah. Okay. Uh, four. Magnet is brought near a loop in the plane of the paper. Okay, so this time the loop is actually flat in the plane of the page. I got my south pole. I'm moving towards it. Well, how many field lines are going through this thing? Well, if it's in the plane, the same plane as the magnet, there's no field. Field lines are going just straight across it. There's no field lines going through. And as this gets closer or farther, it doesn't change the fact there's no field lines going through. There is no change in the flux. And so that means there will be no induced voltage, no induced current, nothing will happen, right? So the induced I is zero. There is no magnetic poles there because there's no current flowing to make magnetic field. And the V at A is equal to the V at B, okay? There's no delta V, there's no current. All righty, good enough. Number five, a magnet remains in place while the loop is rotated clockwise into the plane of the paper. Okay, that's a terrible description. Like looking down on it, it looks like it's rotating clockwise is what, what they mean if I, if I interpret this arrow properly. So what we're doing is north pole of the magnet is facing to the left. And what I'm doing here is I start with this, this coil like this and I'm rotating it to be like this. I'm heading towards flat. So I have a lot of flux going to the left of the loop, but as this rotates, I got less and less flux to the left. So the change in flux, I'm getting less flux left. So current has to flow to make more flux left. That means it's got to go around this way. Which means it's going to make an addition one in the north and this one in the south. Um, if the current's going that way, that means the V at B is greater than the V at A. Okay, and six, magnet remains in place while the loop 
Originally, the plane of paper is rotated. So, here we go. I've got my magnet with my south pole to the right. I'm taking this, it starts off in the plane like this. So there's any few lines going through this loop? Nope, not at the start. But now I'm gonna rotate it like this. There's gonna be an increase in field lines. I'm sorry, there's an increase in field lines to the loop, but which way are the field lines going? This is a south pole. Field lines are going this way to the left into that south pole. So as I rotate this, there's an increase in flux left, which means current has to flow in this to make more flux go right, which means it's gotta go around this way. It's gonna go around this way. Okay, as I rotate this like this, it's gonna make current go around this way and make more flux go to the right to fight against that change of more flux left. So, my induced current goes that way, which means the current's going this way, uh, which means like kind of the page towards us, out of the page, is gonna become the uh, south pole. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyway, but uh, that's not a good way of showing that in 3D, but the near side is the south pole and the far side is the north pole. Um, and then uh, the V at B would be greater than the V at A. The potential at B is greater than the potential at A. All right, that's that page. All right, which brings us to the third page of this whole directionality, all right, of uh, fields and voltages and currents induced, right? Okay, this one says, I'm just giving you a graph of the magnetic flux through the loops, that's phi, that's this axis. This is phi, and this is time. Okay, so we're changing the flux through a loop as a function of time. I want you to draw a graph, just a qualitative, not quantitative, no numbers, just amounts, of the induced potential as a function of time. So here we go. So I'm looking at my formula. What's the formula we're using? Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. That goes like this. The induced voltage is negative n d phi b d t. Right? And then that's equal to my uh, path integral through a closed, pa closed path, e dot d, d l, d s, d r, whatever variable you want to use. Right? So we are interested in, they're talking to us what's happening with the flux, and they want to know what happens with the voltage. So we're not looking at this term, we're looking at these two terms. Hey, E is proportional to negative of d phi dt, which means the rate of change of flux. Hey, wait, this is flux time, flux time. I'm talking about the slope of this graph. The slope of this graph will tell me the voltage. Uh, if assuming that this is the flux through one loop, if there were multiple loops, it'd be double or triple or three, whatever for how many loops I have. Anyway, but here we go. So, but remember the direction it's gotta oppose. So for this first part, I have a right here, it's a straight. And what straight means is the slope here, slope here, slope here, slope here is all the same. If it's a constant slope, it's a constant dv dt. My e, uh, EMF has to be constant. So this is gonna be a constant value in this region of the graph. You see, but this is a positive slope. So I need a negative voltage. So this graph is going to look like this. Down in the negative region of the graph. What about this part? Hey, what's happening to my flux? It's not changing. It's constant. The chain, rate of change is zero, so the voltage is zero. Right? What about this third region? My slope is uh, negative. And so the voltage has to be positive. The slope here, slope here, slope here, it's all the same. It's the same slope, so it'd be the same e EMF value. Hey, is this graph symmetric? Is this slope the same as that slope? Nah, this looks a little steeper, which means my value here, first of all, negative slope's gotta be positive, and it's gotta be a bigger magnitude than this one. So whatever that is, this has gotta be farther up. That's what my graph's gonna look like. Okay, what about this one? D phi dt here is zero, the slope is zero, so no voltage induced. No induced voltage. What about here? Negative, so I gotta have a negative slope, so I gotta have a positive voltage. What about this? Positive slope, so I gotta have a negative voltage. But which is, are these the same steepness? You say, no, this looks steeper than this. Okay, 
I can look at this, see that this angle is smaller than this angle, this line is steeper. It's a greater uh, magnitude slope here, so I gotta have a greater magnitude uh, voltage. So I'm gonna put this further down from the zero line than this is above the zero line, so it's gotta go way down here. Okay? And that is that. All right. Very good, very good. That's it. Okay. Um, yep, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yep, I gotta wrap this video here real quick. Uh, now I wanna do a vault. I told you, I wanted to uh, show you something about this case that we did on the previous one, right? This case here, where I had that bar sliding across, okay? There's some cool stuff I wanna show you with that in the next video.